Salt Lake Bees, they got that right. Hey, they got the Las Vegas Aviators right as well this time. Our news service uh, typically calls the Las Vegas team the Aces, which is not correct. That's Reno. But the Bees rolled to an 11-2 win over the Aviators in their series, series opener on Tuesday. Every member of Salt Lake's starting lineup recorded at least one hit in the victory. Dylan Thomas went deep for the Bees with a three-run home run. And six Salt Lake pitchers combined for 10 strikeouts with Brian Moran picking up the win. That is sports. Same two teams tonight in Vegas or close to it. And explain what you're going to be missing tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to be in Spanish Fork tomorrow to cover the Candy View Falcons continued play in the 3A baseball championship uh, tournament. So uh, the Falcons will take on Union at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then we're going to have uh, the Reds for you in the afternoon, 4 p.m. Oh, we are? are? Are we not? Well, I was planning on Candy in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was planning on Cedar. Talk to you about it. Okay. But uh, – No, because then we have to put up with those guys down there. This is, this is the play in the uh, round uh, there at Desert Hills. Mm -hmm. That is sports. <clears throat> All right, here we are for Wired Wednesday. Hey, you know, Wired Wednesday is really fun and exciting, except for I've lost my voice for the last week because of all the wind and the allergies and the stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, wind is a blessing because it does two things. <clears throat> it gets the garbage air out and it spreads all the pollen. So we get a lot of good plants and a lot of good feed and all the things going on that we need agriculture to survive with, right? Okay. So... Logan, I want to do an audio test. Um, can you just say good morning? Good morning. Does it feed through the station? <clears throat> um, I think you need to change. Uh oh. That doesn't have a microphone. That that's just. Oh, well, that is a microphone. I don't. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, that is a microphone. Is it this? That one doesn't no, go that's in. That's not it. Uh oh. Um. Because in theory, he should be coming through our, our uh, yeah. Logan, say hi one more time, please. Yes, good morning. Can anybody hear me? I can, we can only hear him through the speaker. Through the microphone. Okay, so how... Okay, Logan, I'm going to have you call in. Mostly today our guest is Logan Wolf with um, Western Sorting. And we're having some audio trouble. So, Logan, will you call in? The number is 1435. Five eight six five nine zero zero. Can you send the last four again? Five nine zero zero. Again, this is for Logan Wolf to join us for the audio. Oh, there we have a phone call. Okay, Logan, are you live? All right. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry about that. All of the different audio troubles that I seem to have. I'm not very tech savvy. <laughs> um, good morning. This is Wired Wednesday with McKenna and Hanson. We're running a few minutes late, so we'll get right, right to it. Logan is in Colorado, and he is doing something really exciting in Cedar City over the weekend. And I'm just excited to learn more about what's going on and how he's getting a lot of people involved in agriculture. So, Logan, take it away. What are you doing in Cedar City, and why are you so excited about it? Yeah, so my name is Logan Wolf, and I'm with Western States Productions. Um, what I do is I travel all across the country, and I put on ranch sorting events. And this weekend, I'm coming to Cedar City at the Cross Hollow Event Center, I believe. Um, what it is is a ranch sorting on Friday and Saturday. We're going to give buckles in every class, and um, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. For those of you that don't know what ranch sorting is, it's a horse and cattle competition with two 60-foot round pins hooked together with a 13-foot opening in the middle. There's 11 head of cattle, numbers zero through nine, with a blank on one side, and two contestants on horseback. You enter as, as, enter as a team, so you ride into one circle, and uh, the judge will put up his flag. Once you cross the start foul line, they'll give you a number. Let's say they give you number three. The objective or the goal of the game is to sort the three from the herd and put it in the other pen, then the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, or as many as you can get across in order, in the fastest time. The most head of cattle in the fastest time wins. And what does fastest time mean? Like how fast are they doing it? Is this like a 10 minute process? 
So, so the base time is 60 seconds, but we have a handicap system and a rating system. Um, so there's different levels to the game. Um, we have a one to nine rating system, one being grandma on a trail horse. Anybody that can swing a leg over a horse that can get on, trot a circle, um, can have success. And we have like a beginner class for that. So they can come in and be successful, you know, and they'll get two or three head across and, uh, and be successful. Now we have an open class or all levels class. Um, higher rated contestants riding that and they can get all 10 in you know 45 or 50 seconds wow that just seems an incredible pace to me because going through the different things you know from one pen to the other just seems really i mean 45 seconds chris what can we accomplish in 45 seconds <laughs> <laughs> you're asking what chris might in 45 seconds not a lot <laughs> <laughs> so Logan, what got you? We can irritate Cedar City in forty five seconds. <laughs> no, don't make me laugh. I'm going to start coughing. Oh, um, <clears throat> Logan, what got you into ranch sorting, and why are you still involved? And I believe you're like the president or the co-chair president of this activity. Yeah. So, so I've I've been involved since I was born. My dad, um, my dad started RSNC, and um. And so I, you know, it's been the family business since since I was very little. I've helped in every aspect of the game, um, from helping switch the cattle or open the gates to now producing events. Um, so what I did is I started Rant, Western States Productions um, three years ago, and I travel across the country in the Western states, particularly for these for my events, and um, I put on my own events. But I also help with um, I also help with r and c production events, which is like the world finals and regional events all the way, you know, Florida, Ohio, Georgia, all over the place. And uh, speaking of that, we have our world finals coming up in Fort Worth this June, um, the second weekend of June, and we're expecting almost 10,000 teams. It's crazy. That seems, you know, everybody knows of the NFR and the PBR and all of the different things. I just feel like, at least for my knowledge, and I'm associated with agriculture, I'm not necessarily in producing, you know, having horses kind of thing, but sorting, I haven't known about for very long. And I have a couple of friends over in Panguitch that run their own sortings, but it's, it's still kind of more localized rather than, you know, national or regional kind of things. How, when did sorting get started and when did they start really competing and going through it? Because the NFR has been around for, I think, like 40 years or more. Yeah. Yeah. So it's relatively new. Um, we, so my dad started RSNC, which is called Rant Sorting National Championships in 2007. Um, you know, he started with 800 teams at his first world finals and he thought it was the biggest, coolest thing ever. And uh, from then last year we had, we had eight, 8,000 teams, but right now we have, it's uh, actually worldwide. Um, we have over 400 sanctioned events across the country and you can check out um, where those events are located on the RSNC website at ransorting.com. And um, now we have 32,000, 33,000 members. So, you know, in, if, if you look at the big picture, it is small and young, but uh, it's growing at an exponential rate. I was going to say going from 800 to, you know, 10,000 in a matter of what, that's 10 plus five, 15 years. I can yeah. do math, right? Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's really incredible, especially because it seems like everybody can get involved. I mean, you said you you kind of qual can qualify with a handicap. I can barely sit on a horse. And those who have seen me sit on a horse know that I can just barely sit on a horse. Let's be real. But going into a sorting event, you can be successful in going through and just sitting there and learning what a sorting event does and how it operates. And you can really learn how these applicable skills, you know, just like the NFR and just like the PBR, they started from a, a roots organization of when, or a root system of when cattlemen and horsemen needed to accomplish something with those livestock. You know, sorting is a big deal because in the springtime or in the fall time, you have to sort, you know, mother cows from calves to tag them and brand them. And then you again have to do it in the fall to sell those calves and or your you know, replacement heifers and all of those things, but it's incredible. Those skills and abilities are now at a competition level, you know, because people 
are one entertained by the ability to do that in under 60 seconds, but it's not an unattainable adventure for those of us just learning about it. Man, you've done your research. That's good. No, I don't. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I know enough to get in trouble, I suppose. But it's it's really incredible the different aspects of how people are getting involved with agriculture at all levels right now. Because and I mean, I ran into a guy at the grocery store from Duck Creek, you know, and we were having the conversation. I said, you know, at least we're blessed to live in an area that we can. We're almost self self sufficient. We've yeah. talked about it on the show before, but Iron County is placed well enough. And in the state of Utah, we're almost self sufficient. There's only a few things we don't grow or don't produce in the state of Utah. And that goes back to sugar cane and we could just switch to sugar beets. Really. We've done it before, but getting agriculture involved and getting it in the forefront of people's mindsets is how we have clothing and how we have food in the grocery stores. And a lot of other countries right now might be suffering because of, you know, lack of production or lack of different things in that area. So Logan, tell us a little bit about your family and how your, how I mean, your dad started the RSNC, if I said that right, RSNC, yes. Um, but do you have children that you're bringing up into this? Like, are you excited to see the, the future of ag within that? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I am married. My wife, is uh, name is Jessie, and uh, we do not have any kids yet. But the, the good thing about ranch sorting is that it's a family event, and from, I mean, like six-year-old kids all the way to 80-year-old grandparents. Um, as long as they're still able to ride a horse, um, we see multi-generations come and compete um, at the same event and compete together and, and have success. So that's something that's really cool. And, you know, I, I really believe that ranch sorting is the, um, you know, equestrian event or ag event of the future. Um, the, the ability for such a wide range of people to be able to do the sport is um, outstanding compared to a lot of the other events. You know, for a cattle event, it's some, it's it's very affordable, and um, you know you don't have to grow up with a rope in your hand um, to be able to compete and get good at it really fast. Um, it's not not super dangerous. We have it in a confined area, and uh, it is still a thrill. You know, it can still be exciting. You can go as fast as you like, um, and it's not a judged event. So you know, the ability for this sport to grow. Um, is is just outstanding. I really am excited and encouraged that there are getting there's new ways to get involved with agriculture. And just a quick run through of the event, I have the poster in front of me, and I will post it on our Facebook page, Wired Wednesday with McKen and Hansen. But um, the event starts Friday and Saturday, both at nine a.m. at the Cross Hollow Event Center over at the arena. As everybody knows, it's in between you know Walmart and Highway Fifty Six, so to speak. But you know, you go through the different events and the divisions and the different things on the poster. But I mean, again, you can figure out how to start in this. You know, I would start by attending, you know, and my, my children love animals. In fact, we just got finished going through lemon season with a few producers over here, but they'll go into the doggy pen and, and really get involved in hands-on. And luckily the producers tolerate us enough that we can just, you know, show up and a attempt to help although sometimes I think we're more in the way but it's incredible that I can I can go to this western states production sorting event and just start getting involved with it you know go and attend and my kids can get introduced to it and they can really start just seeing the entry levels now my oldest is still too young to get you know really started into this but there's hope for the future of what this could look like for her you know, outside of the traditional um, uh, barrels and poles and goat tying and all the different things in that nature. So Logan, in our final, you know, five or six minutes, what do we want to know about, you know, sorting and or different things that you want us to get involved with? Yeah, so real quick, I, we have made a change. On Friday, it does start at 11 a.m. Friday, it will start at 11 um, and then Saturday, it does start at nine, like you said. So just wanted to make sure we cleared that up. Um, and a lot of, a lot of um, um, hesitation comes with a, a, a national organization comes to town and uh, people get intimidated about, you know, maybe not being able to compete. Uh, our, our goal and our, our business plan has been to 
focus on the novice riders. So new people coming in and we made sure we have a spot for the brand new people. So um, instead of having a five or six point rating system like we used to have, we opened it up and have a nine point rating system and we split that bottom end up to where um, we really broke it up and, and you know, brand new people can come in and have a shot to compete. We have that beginner class um, on Saturday, I believe. And what we'll do instead of 10 head, we'll put six head of cattle in there. So like one, zero through four and a blank and then five through nine and a blank. And, um, and you know, it just makes it, it simplifies it even more. Um, we, we have a free first year membership. All brand new members are free. And every year thereafter, if you bring a new member, um, it's free as well. All we charge is a $3 sanctioning fee. So really it's, it is very affordable. And um, it's not something that you have to come in and spend a ton of money. You can come in and ride a couple of times, spend, you know, up to a hundred dollars and, and have a really, really good time. Um, we will be given buckles in every class. And, um, and, you know, it's just, it's just something that, something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. I travel all over the country. I produce ranch sorting clinics. I sell ranch sorting horses. I do events and, um, you know, that's, that's been my, that's my, been my entire life. I kind of grew up, um, and I went to, I went to school thinking I was going to be an engineer. I went to CSU, graduated there and, uh, thought I was going to go be a mechanical engineer. And when I finished, I decided I didn't want to sit at a desk all day and, uh, just keep doing what I, what I love to do. So. It's incredible when people of passion get into different industries, because you can really you can really see why they want to improve things or want to involve more and more people, you know, like the kind of like the fires alive mm -hmm. with it. Right. I mean, granted, I'm an insurance agent. Nobody wants to talk about insurance on the radio and you know, it's pretty <laughs> a dull subject. However, my passion behind it almost mirrors that of Logan's with his sorting because there's such a need for strong, for people who want to help other people within the different industries. We've gone to such a click society, especially with insurance, you know, and I don't want to talk to anybody because I know what I need to do in insurance. Well, I mean, much like Logan's passion for this, he's been raised in this, he's been doing it and I'm not aging him online, but I mean, he's doing this for the better part of 20 years being active in it. And now he started his own organization within it, you know? So within all of those different capacities, you know, I'm a licensed insurance agent because I have a passion for helping people to the fullest extent possible with insurance. And it's really complicated and it's really hard for a lot of organizations to get good insurance. However, if you have a licensed professional who wants to do the best that they can do, they're going to help you to the fullest extent possible. So it's just, you know, a matter of time with, you know, sorting, becoming the, as big as the NFR and being a well-known brand within that. Logan, thank you so much for coming on the air with us. I am so grateful that you were able to come on and do this with us this morning. I am so excited. I will be stopping by Friday afternoon with my children and trying to watch the sorting and what I that looks like. Do I think you should do it. I, I, think I you don't should. have a horse to do it. <laughs> I have horses. We'll find, your, we'll find a horse. We'll find yeah, your horse. Be, That's not a problem. You know, they, <laughs> no, you know, there, there's that old saying, um, those that can't do or do can't or whatever can't do too. yes and i i'm one of those i'll just sit in the bleachers i'll teach other people how to sit in the bleachers <laughs> I, this has been quiet oh, <laughs> well i will meet you at the at the arena on friday afternoon thank you so much for joining us this has been mckinnon hansen with wired wednesday your local farm bureau financial agent my number is 435-592-2021 thank you again thank you guest. we're not not trying to be rude, but we got to clear him off so we can create. No, you're stuff. good. You're good. So, Logan, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Did, did you give your phone number? I thought I did. Well, I did um, oh, maybe. Um, 435 592 2021. All right. Okay. And one last chance for a check of traffic. Here's Captain Craig. Now, let's with, see. Uh, what are you seeing up there, uh, Mr. Bennett? You out of here already? I think so. I think, I don't know, Logan's still on this and he's still live, but I, I'm i wondering. Thank Good. you. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to just say bye to Logan.
Thank you so much. That was so awesome. Yeah, that was great. I really appreciate the opportunity. I, um, oh man, it's <laughs> one of these days I'll get the technology right. Um, no, really, I will stop by Friday afternoon. I know you're going to be so slammed, but I'd like to just meet you and shake your hand. Um, my kids love anything agriculture, so they are super involved with anything I can get them into. Um, although we're not necessarily in to the whatever the pre barrel stuff it, that's just it's like dance moms but worse over here <laughs> and I'm just not ready for that I just you know I I mentally can't do that yet <laughs> so anyways I'll let you get going thank you so much I appreciate your time I appreciate it thank you bye See you.